Acts 9, 1 through 4. Acts 9, 1 through 4. But Paul threatening with every... This is Saul. Saul threatening with every breath and eager to destroy every Christian went to the high priest in Jerusalem. Now the high priest had center control of the Jews. He had a lot of control and um, the Romans typically listened to him. We see that influence at the um, crucifixion of Christ. How much the Jewish priests and system all had influence over Rome and how much Rome influenced them. Most of the Romans were Jewish so the high priest held, kept peace in a way with the Romans. So, um, and Paul saw at this time being Jewish would have went to the high priest and got authority from him because according to the Jewish system this was done away with Christ but the high priest stood in the place representing people before God as he made a sacrifice. Now the high priest was never treated as a prophet although Saul's kind of going to him to get that push letting him know that God's okay with this which God ain't they have nothing to do with the high priest anymore since the crucifixion. But either way, that's what he's doing here. He requested a letter addressed to synagogues in Damascus requiring their cooperation in the persecution of any believer he found there, both men and women, so that he could bring them into in chains to Jerusalem. So at this time, the Jewish Christians were still going to the synagogue. They were proclaiming the name of Jesus, but they were still going in the synagogues. Um, much like uh, the, in the chapters earlier, they went to the temple. Um, so their life hadn't changed that much. It wasn't because they were Jewish. They still practiced that lifestyle for the most part. They just knew Christ was the answer to it all. So. Right, so they didn't form their own form of worship yet. They just did what they used to do, proclaiming Christ. And now they didn't do the sacrifices or anything anymore, I don't believe. But they just kept going to synagogues and worshiping there. It was just they knew they were worshiping Jesus at this time. And they'd share Jesus there. And this is what Saul didn't like, I mean, them sharing Jesus in the synagogue. So the high priest kind of being in charge of the Jewish system... Um, made this decree to the synagogue so that if anybody proclaiming the name of Jesus would be cast out and took them, they could have them killed. So that's what's going on here. And Saul's mission, I guess, is go around and collect them from this and bring them to execution. As he was nearing Damascus on his this mission, suddenly a bright light from heaven spotted down upon him. Now this bright light, we often see in Scripture how Jesus is referred to the light. So this is God, of course. So this is his first true encounter with God. At this point, and we see this with the heart of the Pharisees. Saul is a Pharisee. And that they were so legalistic, they served their law, but they never truly served God. So this is most likely the first time Saul probably even encountered God at all even with all his religious background, which shows that religious background don't do anything. Jesus does it all. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So, of course, this voice is from Jesus, but it's a testimony to Saul. and This would change Saul. Sometimes we, God has to speak more clearly to us for us to hear him. Sometimes certain instances have to happen to us so we dedicate ourselves to Him. 